Good evening, everybody. If I could have your attention, please, we're going to get this started. My name is Amy LaValle. I am the town clerk. I was just elected June 13th for town clerk, so please be patient with me. Thank you. Thanks for voting. Um, so I wanted to welcome everybody here tonight and say thank you so much for coming. Your input, input excuse me, is super important for what we are looking at doing. So we really appreciate each and every one of you for being here. Um, so I'll, did you want to give a basic overview of what we're going to do? Or do you want me to do that? Doesn't matter. So Lynn Sibley, who you all know, I'm very sure you all know, this is, some, this is something that she's been trying to do for a long time. And the post office finally said, hey, we can do that now. So this isn't something that's brand new on our end. It's not something that we just thought of, oh, hey, let's do this. This is something that's been trying to be in the works for a very long time. Because this is kind of Lynn's baby, I'm gonna pass the mic over to her and she can give you all of the information what we want to do is kind of give you an overview of what we're trying to do, and then we want to gauge your opinions on if you think this is something that we should do or not do. At the same time, we are open to answering any questions that you might have. Unfortunately, we couldn't get a representative from the United States Post Office to join us tonight. Oh, shocker. <laughs> right? Trying to get a hold of somebody is like trying to find a KGB member, I swear to God. Um, so we'll answer the best that we can, but just know that we can't answer like technical questions, like how exactly is the post office going to do this? Uh, we've just been assured by them that, that they can. So I'm gonna pass the mic over to Lynn, and thank you very much. Thank you, Amy. Um, I want to start off with saying that none of this is a done deal. This is still in the thought process. Um, and your input tonight, if you have questions we can't answer, we will get those, the answers to those questions. So I'd like to start off with just a little history. Um, I, probably everyone here has had an issue with their post office mess ups, <laughs> let's just say. Um, and not only post office, but a lot of other things as well. Um, so none of this is gonna be new to you. Uh, so it's just, I, I'm sure each one of you have a story to tell. Um, years ago, back when I was a kid, I remember that people could use RFD South Deerfield. If you put RFD, and that meant it was Waitley. Whereas now you have to just use South Deerfield Mass 01373 now that we've become computerized. Uh, back when it was hand sorted, RFD South Deerfield knew Waitley, it went to Waitley. But times have changed. And just uh, over the years, we've tried to get the rural route to come out of Waitley. The post office said no. We tried to get the post office moved to a, lo a lo different location uh, just for size purposes. The post office said no. So when we had this meeting with the Postal Service, actually I got um, uh, Congressman McGovern involved in this whole thing. He, he's the one that kind of spearheaded it. So um, when they came forward at a meeting and said, oh, I think we can solve this. And what they would do is we, everyone in Waitley could use Waitley 01093. And internally within the Postal Service, they would reroute it to the proper post office. How that works technically, I'm not sure, and we're trying to get those answers, but that sounded like a really good solution to me. That's why we've kind of been proposing this. But just to give you some idea of some of the problems we've been having, um, have you tried to get a delivery from UPS or FedEx or whatever, and they f find out they've been trying to deliver your package or actually have delivered your package in Deerfield? No, you've never had that problem? I think they okay, wait a minute, folks. I think we're gonna have a lot of people on both sides of this, the fence here, so. 
Um, but I was just tr trying to give you some idea of why we initiated this conversation and get some ideas on how we could uh, improve it. Um, I think that that problem for those people who did have the issue was even intensified during the holidays because your regular driver, your regular UPS, your regular FedEx driver, Amazon, they all, after a while, get to know where you are. So it seems that if it's a regular driver, you're fine. But during the holidays, they hire a lot of temps. And we find that this whole situation seems to increase during the holidays. Again, it goes back to normal after the holidays when you have your regular driver. The other thing that's been brought to our attention, and we get all these complaints in our office because they feel that we should be able to do something about it. So that's another reason why we're here. Um, if you are new to town, which I don't see too many new faces here, you're all pretty familiar, a couple, but um, if you called Comcast to get your Comcast hooked up, and you gave your address as 115 North Street, Waitley, they would say, sorry, you don't exist. And then you turn around and say, how about 115 North Street, South Deerfield? Oh, there you are. So we're in, I, that's my ad. So if I say South Deerfield, they get me all set up. Then the person that's supposed to come to your house to connect stuff calls you later on and says, well, I'm over in South Deerfield and you aren't there. So, um, and the same thing I know happens with Eversource. That's why you're my little, when you're trying to get your electricity hooked up. Um, the other thing that really brought this to a head for, there are a couple things that brought it to a head for me, but we um, excise tax bills. If you do everything exactly right, you're golden. If you give your residential address, your mailing address, and your garaging location, you're golden. However, many times that doesn't happen. So what happens is all these bills get sent to South Deerfield. South Deerfield has to abate them or void them and then send them back to the registry because all these bills come from the registry. The town doesn't do these bills themselves. They come from the registry. The registry turns around and rebills them, but if you haven't changed everything in the system, every year it does the same thing. So uh, some of you may have received a uh, message from me with an excise tax bill that says, please change your address with the Registry of Motor Vehicles. Um, that is the reason why. Um, I've also noticed that sometimes new cars, when people get a new car, the dealer doesn't always know the importance of putting in all the three different addresses. So again, it ends up that the excise tax bill goes to South Deerfield or to Haydenville. We get about 100 misdirected a year in excise tax bills. Um, we do get them to the people eventually, but it takes a little bit. Um, in matter of fact, today I went on the Registry of Motor Vehicles website just to see what would happen if I put my address in. I think now that it's online, it's even a little harder because it's up to you to decide that you have to put in all these different addresses. So I went in and I said, okay, I'm going to put in my information. And I put in 115 North Street, Waitley, Mass. as my residential address. It said that, that I, we have tried to... Um, I can't remember the exact wording, but they look at the postal database and said that address doesn't exist. Do you still want to use it? You do get the chance to override it, but it kind of is in intimidating when it says your address doesn't exist. So I'm not sure that many people would override it. They'd probably just turn around and put in South Deerfield to make it um, fly. fly, exactly, fly. Um, so that's another little issue that um, I've been working with Registry of Motor Vehicles trying to make sure not only that the website is clear, but also their employees are sure to ask the three questions, residential, mailing, and garaging locations. So we'll hopefully one of these years we'll get those straightened out. Um, 
And then uh, we've also had a lot of people who say, I never got the bill, and then they find out that their bills have been returned to sender, or they get delivered in South Deerfield sometimes at an address and they reject it and say not here, so it gets returned to sender, which in turn, if it's a electric bill or whatever else, we've actually had people had their electricity shut off because they never got the bill. Granted, they should have recognized the fact that they hadn't gotten the bill and questioned it, but still, um, they've been those, those cases before. Um, have, I don't see too, well, there are a few uh, River Road sort of people. River Road and North Street uh, are, are especially uh, difficult because there are the exact same addresses in both towns. Have you become best friends with the people in River Road and South Deerfield? Some people have. I mean, they actually go to each other's houses and say hi and and I have one guy says he has a sign on his garage door. This is not the so and so <coughs> residence. Go to Waitley. So uh, you know there are those situations, um, and we've also had situations where the Deerfield resident has returned stuff. You know they won't accept it. Um, and it doesn't end up getting delivered. They just return it and don't say try Waitley. So it gets returned. <laughs> However, those are some of the not as critical situations. The, surprisingly, huh? Um, the, one of the things that's really come up lately is real IDs. So all the people who have your South Deerfield address, if you've gone for a real ID, trying to find something, <coughs> you have to have your uh, driver's license, you have to have your birth certificate, but you also need another form of identification that has your address on it. So if you're at, all your mailing is going to South Deerfield, you have to have something that has the Waitley address on it. And most people in South Deer, using the South Deerfield address don't have that. So it used to be with my old, one of the downfalls of my new, of the new um, um, billing system for taxes. Um, my old system, I used to be able to print out something that actually had the Waitley address on it. The new one, I don't have that capability anymore. So it's a little bit harder. People would come to the office and, and say, is there anything? And the Registry of Motor Vehicles has a very specific list of things that they will accept. We've tried street lists, but that's not an acceptable item because it, it does have, a, it's the town of Waitley, it does have the street address, but it still has your mailing address. And that is, and it's also not one of their accepted things. So, um, Voter registration seems to be one of the better choices. They will accept a voter registration card. However, many people, when they fill out their voter registration card, they don't put the physical address and the mailing address. They'll put the physical address, and then they'll put same, but they'll use the South Deerfield. <laughs> so it, it, there is a lot of training of people that's involved in this whole situation as it is now. Um, but trying to, that has been one of the biggest complaints over the last couple of years of people trying to find something with their Waitley address. We also have that same issue with voting addresses because people will go and they'll um, register to vote at the RMV because it's automatic. When you go do a transaction at the RMV, it automatically registers you to vote now you have to actually opt out of voting. But if the RMV doesn't get it right and doesn't use Waitley as the physical address, your registration goes to Deerfield. Deerfield, in turn, will reject it because they don't have your address in Deerfield, unless maybe they, on those River Road accounts, they might. Um, so they will reject it. You'll get a notification that says you're uh, uh, registration for voting has been rejected. We get 
because we are so familiar with the situation, Deerfield and Whaley have kind of made a love-hate relationship here, and they send us a listing of everyone that they reject. So we turn around, send out a new voter registration form telling them that they have to use their physical address and their mailing address, and sometimes people return them, sometimes they don't. They also, with this whole um, registration online, or at the RMB, um, oh gosh, thought went out of my head. Um, oh, uh, we also get a lot of duplicate registrations because people will use um, the Waitley address and the, it goes through the registry of motor vehicles. Everybody comes through again as a duplicate address, so we're kicking everybody out. That technically doesn't have an issue with the, isn't the zip code problem, but it is a, a problem. Um, and if you wanted to check your voter status, and you went online to the Secretary of State and tried to check your voter status, if you don't use the 01093 zip code, it will appear that you aren't registered. So if you put in the 01373, because that's the address you always use, it will say you aren't registered because it's the zip code that generates which town they're looking in. So um, you have to use the 01093 if you're checking your voter status online. So what happens is people see they aren't registered, so they register again. So, uh, but in the meantime, they really were registered because it's just they couldn't find their registration because they used the 01373 zip code. So those are some of the issues that we deal with. And the, the like I said, we met with the uh, post, Postal Service and um, Cody from uh, Governor, uh, Governor, Congressman McGovern's office, and I explained all of these things, these issues, and he came back and said, oh, I think we can solve that. I guess they have done this in Mendon. Um, I meant to call the Mendon town clerk to see how successful it was, but it, I didn't get around to doing that. Um, but what he did say, as I explained earlier, is that every, what they're recommending is everyone would be using the 01093 zip code. It would go internally to, there would be a, internal flag when they're sorting, because they sort everything electronic now, um, that would direct it into which post office it would need to go. Your delivery person would be the same. Everything else would be the same. It's just you would use the 01093. Would, you, would it be South Deerfield 01093? Waitley 0093. Okay. Um, and the... Uh, Post office stays the same. Yep, the post the office same. stays the same. There was something else I was going to say, and I slipped my mind. Um, maybe I put a note here. So, so what are you thinking? The the post office. It's really important to know. Thank you. It's really important to know how I come down on this issue is how it's actually going to be executed by the post office. Yeah. That's because, one thing we've been trying to get from them. But if they do it by, well, by street, then, then the people that don't have a mail delivery but use the, use the wait in the post office, then That's what's going to happen with them? Um, and, and then for those of us that go through the Haydenville one, which keeps telling us that we live in Haydenville and we don't, and if something's sent to us in Haydenville, it gets rejected because that address is in Haydenville. So it's the same thing with Deerfield in, the, yeah. in a way. But how are they actually going to do that? And will it take longer to get mail? We which is already a problem. We were required to give them a list of every single address and which um, zip code those addresses should be with. Now, if you have a P.O. box, like Amy was saying, or we should have just said, if you have a P.O. box, you can leave, because this shouldn't affect you in any way. You're going to still use your Waitley, your P.O. box, Waitley Mass, 01093. Um, but we were required to go address by address when we gave them that information. So 
I think, I'm hoping that that kind of clarifies the situation. The interesting question, and one I plan to ask the Postal Service, is what happens if you change that address to a post office? I mean, how difficult is it to, to change it to something else? Um, Go ahead. Uh, no, that's okay. That's all I was going to. Well, I, I'm 72 years old and I've lived in Waitley most of my life. And up until the last year or so, I never had any trouble with getting mail either with either zip code, the 7th or the 9th degree. And I want to know what has changed to create that this situation that we're in right now. I, I went to the Deerfield Post Office tried to talk to that postmaster there, and I'll tell you, he was nothing more than arrogant. I, I, did, I did talk to the Hatfield Post Office. And you said it's Hatfield. Hatfield, it's a, this is a, an interesting situation, because Hatfield is the postmaster for the Waitley Post Office. And Haydenville. And Haydenville. Then South Deerfield, and they're also <coughs> delivered by two separate, Waitley is delivered by Hartford, and South Deerfield is delivered by Shrewsbury, so it's two different, um, two different main places that are dealing with it. But I did ask him that question about um, what has changed. Um, I'm not sure I got a really good answer, but uh, I know that the postmaster here was instructed that if the address was not correct, to send it back. Um, and that was kind of, re it was probably within the last two years that they were instructed to do that. They were putting labels on everybody's mail for a little while that said, please change your address. And then all of a sudden they were returning we, stuff. We never got anything that there was, you know, saying that there was a problem with that. And we had our registration on our car cancel. Yep. Because we never got a bill from the insurance company. So if the public bath is saying that they put return addresses or whatever, it, it went some abyss somewhere because it never even went back to the insurance company. Yeah. And well, we got, I used to get occasionally one step and say, please correct your address if I have accidentally used lately 0093 on something because I have a PO box. Um, and I get this little yellow sticker on it that says, just please correct your address with your, with the mail or the sender or whatever. Um, but I think the orders changed about two years ago when they started returning everything. Well, I think it changed when we got, when you got the new postmaster in Hatfield who decided, well, this is, a, you know, we shouldn't be doing this. Right. And that's what's created the problem. So, um, Lynn, you just said that if people who have a post office box can leave now, but and we have a post office box and we don't get mail delivered to our house, but we get packages delivered to our house, and those have to go to South Deerfield, oh, no, oh, not seven, oh, one three seven three. So, it's uh, we've had all those problems. Um, so, doesn't it affect us? Because wouldn't it be great if we could have packages delivered to Waitley 01093 yeah. well, and not have to figure out whether something's going to the post office or to our house? You know, I've been trying to get um, an answer to the question of why why do the um, delivery services have to use the South Deerfield? Why? And they say, well, it shouldn't have anything to do with the zip code. And I'm like, but it does. Because when you order something <coughs> online or whatever, and you put in your weekly address because you're thinking, oh, it's coming from FedEx or UPS, it says that address doesn't exist. And you can't, some of the places, you can't change it. Um, others, you can. You can override it. But some, you can't change. And you know, I, I asked them about that, and they said, well, they shouldn't be using our postal database. But frankly, I think that is not the case, because even when we send our census forms out, it goes through the postal database before they're sent. 
So I think everyone is using the postal database, and that's an issue. Um, and also and, GPS. And GPS, yes, if you go, in, certain GPSs, some are better than others, but uh, you go and put your address in to get you home, it's bringing you to South Deerfield, you know? You know you don't live in South Deerfield, but GPS seems to think you do. So, um, Cynthia. Oh, so one of, one of the things that's coming up is when you, when companies are shipping, when companies are shipping, they no longer use a, they no longer can determine what source they're gonna use. So right. say you get something from Land's End, Mm -hmm. It might start off with USPS and then get switched to UPS. Right. It might do vice versa. What right. I've been experiencing in West Whitley is that I have paid for shipping, they change the carrier, and to get switched over to USPS from UPS, I then get charged a second time for shipping. Wow. And this has happened at least six times. So because I can ask the person, like I don't, I typically don't just fill something out online and buy it. I try to talk to a human being to see if I can get some information. Yeah. But the reality is that they don't have agency or control over that. And they can't guarantee that if they say, oh, well, we only use USPS or we only use USPS, <coughs> you have to request certain types of shipping, which can often be more expensive. But paying twice for shipping is more expensive as well. Do they return it and then ship it again? No. Or they I get notice from the Williamsburg Post Office that I have to come and pay nine, ten, fifteen dollars for shipping because the USPS didn't get their cut from the shipping. Ooh, I had heard that's a new one for me. <laughs> who continues to mess up on almost every <coughs> level yeah. our future mail delivery. Right. The, how many people in town are serviced by this post office? A hundred? Maybe? Um, no, there's no. 300. Okay, 300. Yeah. There are 1,300 of the rest of us who are under, <coughs> uh, are going to have to change, literally, in my case, scores yep. yes. of addresses yep. in order to make this theoretically work by entrusting it to a post office that will no longer forward mail, I, which is as easy as falling off a horse. I hear you too, Richard, because I've been especially late. And excuse my tone of voice. No, I that's okay. I, this, this kind of stuff really pisses me off because I, our government at every level fails us. Yeah. I, I hear you, and I, the more I am not able to actually talk with the representative, the more cautious I am about this whole situation. So um, that's why we, we wanted to have this meeting. We wanted to hear your concerns. We wanted to make sure that when the selectmen meet, and we will take down your, you know, how is this going to work? We, we, we need to know, and we need to get that information to the residents before they can buy into this. Lynn, if I can speak oh, this yeah. Hi, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Fred Barron, I'm on the select board. Yeah. The other two select board members would be here, but they had, they were out of town planned long before this meeting. Uh, there's not gonna be a vote tonight, there's no decision made tonight. I am here <coughs> to try, and this whole thing is about weighing the pros and cons of doing this, weighing the public sentiment, weighing the inconvenience of having things like the bills go to the wrong place versus the inconvenience of what you described as having to change scores and scores of providers and billers and all the rest. And that's, that's what I'm here for tonight, is to find out where, where the community is and the extent of the, uh, the passion on both sides of the issue and the, le and the level of support on both sides. So, that's what I'm here for. I'm listening. Thank you for coming. As I'm going to order, I, I just noticed that a microphone had been handed <coughs> off to my right a moment ago, and she still hasn't had a chance to I talk. I was just going to call. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. Maureen, sorry I interrupted. Sorry. I live on River Road, and it, uh, when I tried to put my address into uh, GPS for, for directions home, if I write 226 River Road, Waitley, 
a can't find it. <laughs> if I put in 226 River Road South Deerfield, it drives me exactly to my house. <laughs> <laughs> right. And this is a situation that I believe that delivery trucks might happen. Because we used to have problems with uh, UPS and FedEx, but we don't anymore. Don't they, uh, they know where to come because they're using GPS. Well, if you change it to Wheatley, will the GPS not, no longer find our house? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're lucky that you don't have, there must not be a truck, the same number in South Deerfield. Maybe. Because I, I think if you find some of the people who have the exact same number in South Deerfield, it ends up going to South Deerfield. So, and North Street. <laughs> so. In empty fields? Oh. <laughs> you have packages delivered in empty fields? My son did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, where would you like me to go? Let's see. Um, I think, uh, let's go, we'll start on this side of the room and work our way back. So, way over the, I can't see who you are. My name's Ashley. Hi, I'm Ashley. Um, I live on River Road. My family moved here about five years ago. Um, and I just want to say my two cents because I definitely hear kind of both sides of this as well. And there's inconvenience on one side and there's inconvenience on the other side. Um, but I, my opinion is that the inconvenience of changing our addresses as annoying and tedious as that going, is going to be, if we find resolution with um, mail actually coming to us, and instead of we've been sent to a, a collection agency because a medical bill didn't reach us. Um, in the last couple of years, we've had a lot of problems. My mom calling me saying, which zip code do I yeah. use? Because the post office is like, that doesn't exist. Um, just a, and a lot of having to talk through people on the phone about where we live versus how mail can reach us. Um, it, it, it is tedious, and so I definitely land on the side of the proposed change for what it's worth. That's all. Okay. Um, yes. Yes. Uh, I've been a resident for uh, over 70 years. And left town, but came back. Uh, I don't have any problems with mail. I live on Christian Lane. I haven't had problems really with getting mail delivery. Uh, from different companies or, or financial organizations or whatever. One thing I, I haven't heard, though, is what is the process for getting this approved by the Postal Service? And nobody has said that really clearly. I looked at that online. You Google that and it will tell you, give you the whole process on here. It tells you it's an internal process, operational process to the Postal Service. I printed out one part of it here. Anybody can look online. Let me just read to certain highlights of it to tell you what that process is. And I guess I don't see the town acknowledging that that's the process. You think it's, you're saying it's so simple, you just tell the local post office you're gonna change and it's gonna happen, or they're gonna forward mail and it's gonna happen. This process online doesn't say that. It well, says- postal. The postal post office representative said that. To us. Well, I don't know what, what did you Google? I don't know what representative. I, I Google changing the US, <laughs> changing the postal process for realigning zip codes. Okay. That's what we're talking about. It says here the local postmaster is not the decision maker in the process. The boundary review process requires any municipality and community group seeking a zip code change. Zip code change to submit the request in writing to the manager of the district with any rationale and justification. Zip code changes are invariably sensitive locally and often involve considerable coordination and investments. So United Post Office requires approval from the district manager, the manager of operations, program support, the manager of processing and distribution, and the district manager of customer service and sales before a proposal can be sent to the area office for approval. So you've got four approvals that need to be done. 
comply with whatever. It says if the request is feasible, the process then requires a formal survey of the customers who would be affected by the proposed change. So if they agree with all this, the post office will send you a, a survey, everybody in town, official survey with whatever address you have. It will not be the survey that the town is taking. Uh, it's going to be their own survey. These are process, process, process it's online for everybody to see. Well, we, the I, people that we talked with were the district managers. Well, so, I don't know where that, where that fits in here, but it, it's more than one person, one, one, <laughs> one level of organization within UPS, the Postal Service to do right, that. Right, and that would be the next, that would go to the next step. Right now we're doing, we're doing the, the conversation well, side right, of things. We good. haven't done those steps yet, but this was a recommendation <coughs> by the district manager of the no. Postal Service, so. No. I don't know where the district manager fits in, but there's I other wanted, levels where the One of the names office, you mentioned was district, district manager. manager. But there's other so. other other offices that are involved. And that would be our next steps. So. If if the select board chose to go this route, this would be the next step. So we can go through those what you're saying. Right, right now we're just in an information gathering phase of this. Right, but it's gonna take the time to, to go through all these all these steps in the organization. Yeah. And and your one thing. Your, your last page here talks about forwarding mail for 12 months. That's not all mail. That's only first class mail. Right. We get magazines, other mail. It's not first class. Right. It will not be forwarded. You would have to change so, the addresses. Well, you. that and, and the other concern is uh, somebody mentioned uh, junk mail will be forwarded. Well, junk mail will be forwarded, but if you change your address, now, that junk, that junk mail is, is going to have your new address. So you're going to get junk mail twice from that same company. Right. Not once, <laughs> twice. You try, try to eliminate an address from the junk mail. You can't do that. It's in there permanently. And you're going to add another address by changing the zip code to that junk mail. Well, it won't so get forwarded, so it's going to have the no. wrong address on it. So but you, you won't, won't get, get it. it. <laughs> well, it depends if you for if you're asking a post office to forward all that or to change it. So. I don't think the post office will forward junk mail. No, no. Yeah. So that we would only still want to get one because the original one would go back, would get destroyed because they won't do anything with it. Um, is that on this side? So I just. I just worry about the ramifications of the yeah, okay, change and mail gets delivered. What about the ramifications? Is that going to have any effect on UPS, DHL, FedEx, yeah. et cetera? Do we know if it will have an effect? Because sometimes when you try to fix one thing, you create 15 new problems. That's a good so everybody's going to be all happy about the fact that we're all 01093, but then no one's going to get UPS or no one's going to get. Do we right. know the answer to that? No, we don't and know. It is that. really That's unfortunate. It is really unfortunate that there is no post office representative. How, how can you have a full and open discussion with, in a democracy without some of the parties being represented? They, and I just, I, I agree with my brother that there is nothing about the post office that I like. And it is coincidental that Louis DeJoy um, and our growth in problems here seem to coincide. Um, I'm sorry, but some of the things that are mentioned are simply, I mean, as far as registering your vehicle, et cetera, et cetera, there's simply care that an individual needs to take to make sure that the garaging address is correct, et cetera, et cetera. I've never had a problem with deliver, delivering mail or um, any service that delivers packages, ever. And I just don't understand, again, why the vast majority of the town is on the 01373 and is going to have to go through this. And yeah, tedious, whatever. We don't even know the depth of how many things we have to change yet. Haven't even sat down and thought about that. But if you do, it's kind of scary. It is. And I also think that, that in this electronic age, I mean, this, the whole idea of people not having an address, not being able to be found, anybody can find you anywhere they want because our, our electronic imprint is everywhere. So I don't buy any of those arguments. And I'm really worried about the ramifications, the, the things we haven't thought about yet. How will they be affected by this change? I agree, we do have an answer to that. 
Um, and I also agree that if, I don't take offense on this one, please. <laughs> if people did exactly what they're supposed to do and put in, it would cut down on a lot of this. Um, but because people, I mean, we have people who register to vote and then go over to South Deerfield because they're, and that's where they think they're voting. Um, so, you know, I, I see your point, it's just, um, and you bring up a good point, I think we do need to investigate that further, and if this, if the select board fails to approve this, which, you know, could be the case, I think maybe we need to do some educational sessions with people on how to put their, make sure that they are aware that they have to use both addresses. So we open, also- Open uh, approval is with three people? Open yeah. approval of this change is up to three people? It's up to the select board. Wow. Wow. So, um, why are we here? Because they don't know which way to go. They want, it's informational. Well, it's the survey? It's being, it's being um, the survey was, what was the survey results, Amy? 70% uh, for or something? Yeah, how many surveys? <laughs> Hold on. People, please, for a minute. I can't answer everybody if everybody's yelling. So when we put the survey out, I got 135 responses back. 70% was for, 30% was against. But that was just a survey to get a feel like what we're doing now to see what people's opinions are. I also just want to mention that I understand that it's the it's ultimately up to three people, but it's the select board, and the select board makes the decisions for almost everything in this town. They're the ultimate people that say yes or no. That's why we have the names to get everybody's input, in, input, and but ultimately it is up to the select board because. They're the ones that make these decisions for our towns, not just for this, but for almost everything. Okay, I was working across my way here. Don, I think you had well, to have want to follow up on that. Why do we have town meetings then, if the select board does everything? They need to hear no. The people need to be heard. I think this should yes. be a referendum yes. in the town, not three people I deciding. Like, <laughs> yes. Well, the way things are heading here, it seems like we may be putting this on hold. But, um, okay, um, right here, um, either, either <laughs> My name is Peggy, and I live at 117 River Road, and I'm really good friends with the people at the other 117 River Road, South Deerfield. Um, I've lived in Whaley for nine years. I love it here. Before Whaley, I lived in Leverett. And I'm here, I can tell you that I went through the same thing in Leverett. I used to get my mail through Amherst because of where I lived in Leverett, which is right off of, of um, Deeper. Right. So, and they went through the process. And there were, I believe, three or four zip codes. And it was smooth. When it was decided, we all changed over to 01054 for Leverett, and there were no issues. So it can be done. What, who decides whether it's going to be done? That's obviously in contention, but it's a smooth process, and it can be done. I have a political question. For the people here, uh, who's in favor of going for one zip code? One, one zip code. And who's against? Who's in favor of one zip code? So that, you know, this is, this is why we're having this meeting, because we need to determine the feelings of, it's you people that are going to be affected. You're the ones that are going to, if we do, did the change, you're the ones that are going to be the ones that are going to have to do all those address changes with everybody. Now, if you don't want it, and we don't want to hear from you about your packages not being delivered or your mail not being delivered, because, you know, this is what we hear this. I bet you we get these questions three or four times a week about I never got that mail or it went here or it went there and I had to go here for this package or there that package. 
it's, it's just, we thought that this might be a, a good solution, but it's looking to me like maybe from this amount of people, from this amount of people it may not be. But that's what we needed to know. That's why we're having this meeting. So we need to know what you feel. And we wanted you to make that informed decision. We didn't want you to just say, no, I'm against it. We wanted you to hear the issues and make as much of it an informed uh, decision without having a postal representative here. We did ask. We, they told us that because it's something that we were initiating, that they would not send a representative. So that's, that's why there's no postal person here tonight. But they did say that we could send questions and get answers to specific questions. So um, who else do you Where do you want to get? Um, yes. Let's take let's a couple here that have not spoken either. I'm Liz Scott and I'm on North Street and uh, my, my husband David, who has since passed away, continued for years to write Waitley because he didn't feel, once we had to switch to South Deerfield, that we really were in South Deerfield. That he lived in Waitley and he was going to use that address. And then, and then of course what happened was What's happening now to a lot of people is the mail just didn't get delivered or it got sent back, and I finally convinced him it was time to switch over. The other thing is, I find it a hell of a lot easier to tell people that I live in South Deerfield, I mean, that my address is South Deerfield. I don't have to spell it like I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, but I'm for, the, I'm for getting it back to Waitley. I am because it really would be so much easier in the end. Um, and the other thing is that um, Publishers Clearinghouse, if I win, they're going to deliver it to North Street and South Deerfield. <laughs> That's a problem. Yes. <laughs> Hello, uh, I live in uh, West Waitley on Weber Road, and uh, I guess uh, I actually had a question for you first. When you said that 70% of the people responded positively to the survey, that was just a survey to pursue this, right? Not a say, no, saying 70% yeah. wanted to change. That was a, that was who were for the change. Oh, okay. Yes. Or, just I'm sorry. It was just a one there. question thing. Would you approve of this or not? Yeah. Um, okay. And, so, and uh, there was a place for comments, so we did receive a few comments. And some of them were from West Whitley folks that said, we just got our situation straightened out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess uh, my real question, though, was that when I got here, you just talked about South Deerfield for your entire talk there, and I was well, kind of confused. And so I wondered, like, is this less of a problem for those of us who get our mail from the Haydenville Post Office? We? And I guess, if, I'll just finish asking my question and then shut up. So, because I guess what I'm worried about is if all this rigmarole happens and through South Deerfield, like, will this make things worse for us? And especially, I'm now even more worried about it when you said that at some higher level, those post offices are very different. They have a different structure. They come from a different place. I mean, we're going through Hatfield. You guys are going through um, wherever you said. Shoot there, shoot, yeah. So, I mean, I guess I'm just a little wor more worried now than I was before that maybe there's a lot fewer of us that get it through Haydenville than there are from South Deerfield. But I guess it, if you're just writing comments down to straighten out with the post office, that would be my comment is please make sure that it works for everybody, not just the South Deerfield. Um, a few years back, uh, hey, West Lately folks always had to use Haydenville 0039 to get their delivered mail. A few years back, they changed. The Hagenville Post Office told the residents that they could use West Waitley 01039. That's the Hagenville zip code. And it has worked very well for West Waitley. Yeah. That's why most of the issue is in, in the South Deerfield zip code area. 
I asked the South Deerfield Postmaster, well, it worked so good in Haydenville to change it to West Whateley. Granted, a lot of you who use 01373 aren't part of East Whateley, but I asked him, can we make it East Whateley, Mass, 01373? And they said no. So they wouldn't give a reason. It's no. So I thought, well, that would have been an ideal solution because you would see the Waitley, you know that it's got to go to Waitley. You wouldn't have to, um, you know, you wouldn't have that issue of going to South Deerfield. But no. So although I did talk to the new postmaster in South Deerfield, I, I, I understand those people who have dealt with him. And he said, well, that sounds like it'd be okay. And I asked him to put it in writing. <laughs> yeah. And he wouldn't. So yeah. I figured I wasn't going to suggest any change without something official. Um, but it, it has worked marvelously in West Whaley. They, we, the town has had very few excise tax issues with um, West Whaley residents. Um, it's, it's really worked very well, um, and it does, it's hard to admit that you would have to make the change as well to well, the O&O. Why all. don't we just leave West Waitley alone and I work wish we on could. the South Deerfield part? I don't have any of the problems you listed. I've lived here 38 years, and my name is Steve. I live in West Waitley. I don't have any of these problems. And all of the entities that I would have to contact to deal with this change is a kind of, not exactly a nightmare, but a ton of work. <coughs> and I might not even remember everybody, all the yeah. entities I deal with. I don't want to have to go through this. So here, yeah. I just want to piggyback on, the back, on your comment here. So I'm Amy Schrader, I'm your um, treasure collector. So I'm probably going to have anywhere between 700 to 900 mailing addresses to change due to real estate taxes, personal property taxes, and water bills. So feel bad for me because that is an awful lot to have to change. <laughs> However, I cringe every time I stuff an envelope and it says well, South Deerfield or Havenville. It breaks my heart. I feel like we're losing our identity as a town. Towns are identified by zip codes. Cities are identified by zip codes. I feel it's important. The more and more we give to South Deerfield, I get concerned. I get concerned when it comes to population numbers, census forms, voter registrations, all of those things I value as a resident of Whaley. Um, so that I, I just want to keep that in mind, that there's a little bit of passion that comes behind this too from us standing up here saying, we work in Whaley, we live in Whaley, I'm proud to be a Whaley resident. And I get nervous with GPS not knowing I had someone show up at my house who was supposed to be in Leverett on Long Plain Road the other day. Yeah. It's just, I, I, I feel strongly and I know it's gonna be a lot of work and I agree with Richard about trusting these people who don't even have the decency to show up here tonight and or give us their contact information so we can speak to them directly. That's a huge concern. We were in the office the other day Lynn, Lynn and I and Amy's talking about why can't we get their email address? Why can't I talk to that United States Postal Representative who I was on a Zoom meeting with and now I, I can't get a hold of them. Like this, this is unacceptable. But part of me also feels like I'm, I'm very happy you stood up and said that Leverett did this and that it was a smooth transition. I'm really hoping for the same for us. I just don't want to go too far away from losing our zip code. And I just keep that in mind when you make this decision, when if you're sitting there one night and you're changing your bills and you're going all down your entity list, making sure you covered everyone, we are Waitley. I, I've, got, I've got a question here. Uh, do, you, do you know where the postmaster is that's here? The postmaster is actually in Hatfield. Okay, it's a Hatfield. There's nobody in there. Half the time, there's nobody here. It's a filling job. It limited the hours. It's a filling job. All you got is your boxes there. You go to South Deerfield, you got someone there all the time during the day. They can sell you stamps, do whatever you have to do. <coughs> we have the same here, except that it's li limited hours. Okay. It's uh, quarter ten to 
1230 and then 2 to 5. Okay. So, so what is at the window? Right now, your mail, I'm, I'm retired post office. So your mail goes to Boston or Rhode Island. It is, it is not sorted in Whateley or South Deerfield. It goes there. There's a machine there. The machine sorts it to the zip code that it's given. The machine has been doing this for more than 30 years. It comes back to the post office. Mine would be South Deerfield, all sorted, ready to go. Not a problem. And you call for higher up, you're either calling Boston or Rhode Island. And Waverly doesn't exist. It, it's just a, a, a place. But as far as the mail, that's what you're going to see is the little boxes that are there. You're not going to see a person there to service you with anything. You're going to have to go somewhere else. So, okay. So when I mail out tax bills, I probably mail a thousand of them. I used to, and then also used to go to the effort of coming up here and having them go through the Waitley Post Office to increase the numbers, to just give a little bit of more of a boost. Because that's actually very sad that we don't have someone here. It's not a good thing. I don't think we need, we need, we need representation. We need 01093. We need bodies at our post office. We need the mail to circulate through. When we More find out, I uh, certainly. But when we, when I found out that it didn't matter because every envelope that I sent through our postage machine in the town of Waitley offices says South Deerfield. South Deerfield gets those numbers, yeah. not Waitley. Mm -hmm. And that to me was, I was upset. I'm like, well, what? This is ridiculous. So now, there, uh, South Deerfield's getting every piece of mail that we generate from the town offices. South Deerfield's getting a higher and higher volume number. Yes. Yes, right. and and I I I would it, it's upsetting to me that we're losing it because we're losing our zip code. Yeah. Well, but your mail has to get delivered. Certainly. And, it, and that's the system. Mm -hmm. The system comes from wherever. Yes, it does. So you don't sort it here. It's sorted. I just sorted the So uh, let's see. Who haven't we heard from? Keith. <coughs> and then back in the last row and then over here. <laughs> so, I live on Westbrook Road and one of the constant problems I have is UPS especially. Um, I go to enter in my zip code or my address and they say number one, it doesn't exist. Yeah. South Deerfield will not deliver to my part of Westbrook. They only delivered a half of the road. And they turn around and they will not go across the bridge. So I can't, no one, my neighbors can't get anything delivered by South Deerfield, even though the database says we live in South Deerfield. So that's one problem. And to elaborate what some of the other people have said is that many a times I'll use South Deerfield zip code and enter into, when I order a package, I'll use that because they say I can't use the P.O. box. I go ahead and do that, and it starts off with UPS, and UPS will decide that they are going to have a final delivery by the USPS, and they bring it to South Deerfield, and South Deerfield sends it back because they say, I don't exist. And I call, look for my package, where is it? It was returned, and that's one of the problems. The other thing that hasn't even been said tonight at all is I'm on the fire department in the town of Waitley. We've been having more and more problems, and it's mostly with the, the, the younger generation and newer people in town who swear on the phone when they're calling 911 that they are in South Deerfield. And our dispatcher will, in turn, because they're calling on, again, they're calling on cell phones nowadays, not on landlines, and it takes a little bit of time before the dispatcher can triangulate them to, to, to verify that they are not in South Deerfield. We'll, imme we'll immediately dispatch South Deerfield Fire Department and Deerfield Ambulance to respond to that address in Deerfield when really they needed to come to wait me. On top of that, with other things that are happening nowadays, when we need to dispatch, um, 
intercept ambulance, which is most of the time might be coming out of Northampton. Northampton, they get in their ambulance, they enter, they enter that address into their, onto their GPS and their ambulance and they're heading for that. And it, many times it's not in the right town. So we're having issues with ambulances um, and fire. We've had fire calls where South Deerfield has been the first one dispatched and they finally realized that it's not in South Deerfield and so we're losing precious time in, in fire and in ambulance calls as well. Why don't people, when they call 911, just tell them that they're in Waverly? Because they feel they live in Deerfield, because that's what their address says, and that's what, where they think they live. Yeah, but, but it's, but you're not going to change that, Steve. It's unfortunate. Vote has to vote in Waverly. I, I, I think one thing that's become apparent from this whole conversation tonight is we need to educate the people better on this whole process, even if we don't change the address. How do we do that might be a challenge because, I mean, that we put sent postcards to everyone in every household in Waitley, and this is the amount of people we got. So, um, you know, it's it's hard to get people involved enough to get these points across to them. You know, we send things in the scoop. We send things out by, you know, postcards or mailings or whatever. Oh, I don't read that, it's junk mail. I, you know, so how are we gonna educate people if we keep it the same way? How are we gonna educate the people that this is what you have to do? It's the same argument, I guess, the other way is we're gonna have you change your address. How many of them are going to change their address? Um, so I think we brought up a lot of good points tonight. Were there, um, Tammy, I think you had a, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa, Lisa was next. <laughs> I knew without the microphone. I want to ask the lady who uh, got that taken care of in the library who lived through that. Did that um, trickle over into the package issue that was brought up at the beginning? When I, when I was ordering things, it would become the same sort of issue while you're saying you live in Leverett, but your mailing address. No, I understand that. that. My question was when they took care of that with the uh, zip code, did it trickle over into taking care of things with the packages, or was that still an issue after the fact? No, it was not an issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Um, I think you yeah. have this next. I think it's next. It's on Plain Road. Is there a possibility there's three different zip codes right now, correct? Four. Four. The ones who want to change could change, and the ones who want to stay where they want to stay could stay. I, we can ask that question, but I would sincerely doubt it. Um, but we can ask. I mean, it would be there's four already. Couldn't the ones who are having troubles, like River Road, go to join the Waitley one, and the people who finally get everything straightened out with UPS? and Amazon and everything else get We can ask years. whether it would be an, option, an optional sort of thing, but my guess is it won't be. Um, but we, we will ask if that's another Because there's the financial part of changing check Oh, yeah, yeah. We understand that with all the businesses. To go actually, Although I did have one business come in and say, thank goodness you're doing something about this, even though he knew he was going to have to change all his letterhead and all his um, uh, Chad is like a lawyer, you know, documents, there's just yeah. so much to this. And but he sounded like he was all for it, so surprisingly, I, I, was a, I thought the businesses might be uh, hesitant because of the amount of stuff that they would have to change. And not only just changing addresses, but changing letterhead and checkbooks and all that other stuff. Um, I think Sarah was next, and then Kip, and then over on the corner over there. <laughs> Hi, Sarah Cooper, Christian Lane. My parents lived in Leverett years ago when the Leverett changeover happened. And it was a good 25 years ago, so post office was a very different entity then, but also it was initiated by the post office because they were gonna lose the post office. So that's what concerns me here. The new regime in the post office and also is that we are initiating it instead of the postal service. I think that is a good point. Um, over the years, they, we've struggled to keep this post office. Um, 
I think in a way the Postal Service is trying to do as much as it can to eliminate this post office altogether. Um, that would be even worse, as Amy, there would be our identity gone altogether. We wouldn't even have an 01093. Um, but that is a, a valid point, so. Um, yeah, what's next? And then Ellen. <laughs> Uh, and I'm, I'm Catherine Florio, and I was a postmaster relief right here in Bailey um, a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I was before her. Waitley <laughs> um, is very unique, uh, especially with the four zip codes. It is something that is not going to be easy to solve. It is not going to be fun, but it needs to get done because uh, everything is changing so fast nowadays that if we don't keep up with the um, with things, we're just going to get further and further behind. So um, just keep that in mind. If this is not going to be easy, but something has got to get done if we still want waiting. Ellen. And then Kathy. <laughs> I can truly see both sides. I really do. In fact, when I filled out the questionnaire I wrote, I think we should all have one address, one, one zip code. However, I've been through this two years ago when we had our car registration canceled because we didn't pay our insurance because it, it didn't come to us. And our address was, was written as, as wait as a, let me, let me back, it was, was written as Waitley, and the, and the South Deerfield Post Office sent, sent it somewhere. It didn't even go back to them. So we, we inter long story short, we had to change everything, everything to 01093. I mean, to 0137 Street. <laughs> We've already done this, okay? Two years ago, I did it. It's not easy. You think if you think it is, it's not. And and though I would I would do it again if need be. My question is, if we are 01093, where is that mail going to go to in order to get delivered to us? It will go to South Deerfield. According to what the Postal Service oh, said, what about the people in West Waitley? West Waitley yeah. would go to Haydenville. Well, actually, Haydenville is so much to go to Waitley. How do they know that? Haydenville is 0139, which makes it even more confusing. <laughs> but we, we are all 0139. <laughs> We're 0109. Where is that going to go? If all of us have the same zip code, it's going, according to what I've been told, okay, by the Postal Service, it would be flagged in the sorting facilities to send it to the correct, it would have 01093, but it would be flagged in the sorting facilities to send it to the proper post office. So yours would go to South Deerfield. Um, I was saying, no. What's left? So they're, the they're going to, for every address, they're going to put a flag in the system so that when it's sorted, it will automatically sort it, is, is what I'm understanding the world is So, so what's the thing that now? We used to have to have RFD software because it's got the 01373. But I've had me, I'm on, I never got my W2 sent to me. It, they sent it to Waitley Mass on accident, but I had my mailing address to South Deerfield. They sent it to Waitley Mass 01093. It got rejected back up to the Bedford headquarters because they couldn't because find it. Because it has not in perspective. But, why, but that's my point though. Why can't, if they can do this whole thing with changing zip codes and flagging it, why can't they put a flag right now that says anything in Waitley Mass? Go to zero or your 01373. Why do we have to change everything again to 01373 and then have to change it again? You don't have to change it twice. So right now, you're saying that if we change the address to 01373 or uh, 01093, okay, there's a flag in whatever system that will send it to South Deerfield or Haydenville. Right. Why doesn't that happen now? 
Well, we have to go through certain steps to have that happen. But what? Why after? Why post COVID did that change? Why did the you, somebody said you had to have this four levels? Before that. This is before that. It, but more, I know for us after COVID, it became more of an issue than pre-COVID. But my question is, if the postmaster changed it, why does four people have to approve oh, this new exactly. zip code change? Two or three zip code right. change? I don't know. The four people can't change this. Three people can't change this. As far as I'm concerned, what happened is it comes to kids. Went to 0093. Yeah. They don't have you, so they returned it. If it's 0093 in the system, it would get flagged and sent to South Deerfield. But well, why, why can't we do that now? Why well, is this a discussion? Because you're asking you to be able to do both things at the same time. Right. And the post office says, no, you have to either have to yep. use the South Deerfield one or use the Lincoln <coughs> one. You can't expect us to be able to use both. But you just said that you could, they can flag in the system well, and it'll send to. RFD South Deerfield, it went to directly right. to South Deerfield. Right. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you could, once they did the automation, you couldn't use that RFD anymore. You said that in South Deerfield now. Right, but we used to put Waitley in front of it. We, uh, when I was when I when I came up through the Waitley school system, we were taught River Road Waitley, uh, RFD South Deerfield, RFD South Deerfield, and then they said drop the RFD. So fine, drop the RFD, but you're still still using the South Deerfield in that uh, se separate line, the the city location, and then I I do know that there are some people along River Road who do use their street address and then put Waitley in parentheses and then South Deerfield Massa 1373. Um, you're must be I know another party too that does that. I haven't talked to him on how it works. Does it work well for you? Is there a the same address in Deerfield? Do you know whether your address is the same as someone in Deerfield? I don't know. Okay. Bob? So when if if the post office can flag all those addresses that go to South Deerfield but would then be 0093. Why couldn't the post office flag the River Road, the yeah. North Street ones now to dedicate them to go to the right town? And that maybe that I mean if they can let's that's that's another question. question. Well they did it for years. Well I mean yes. that's another question. <laughs> Seem to save a lot of pain. That is a good question, and it, that may be a possibility. So we we can ask the postal service that to see if, if that would work. Kathy, you you've been waiting. I mean, so we catch traps on the Mount Weber Road at West Waitley, and we changed our mailing address to West Waitley, and we've had absolutely no problems. And it sounds like that the town was able to work with Hayden. So it sounds to me like part of the problem here is South Deerfield. Yeah, yeah. They're saying no. That's but if this is a government entity that's supposed to have unified regulations, it appears to me that you need to go above <coughs> the postmaster in South Deerfield who's saying no, and go someplace to go above that person and get the easy way to that why can't they do it in South I know. What I do they mean, it? I, makes I, no I, sense. The Hayesville postmaster probably doesn't want it publicly known that they changed it. I think well, they no. just took it from the South Deerfield. They have to do what they did. They have to put that through an NFFD process. Yeah. Yeah. They have to have that proof. They can't just all of a sudden. I don't know what happened, but it was like. <laughs> I don't know how it went through, but it, it did and it worked well. We have talked to, the, I think the problem might be the two different districts, the Payton Bills in the Hartford district and um, Deerfield's in the Shrewsbury di district. So it could be that Shrewsbury no. would allow them to change it to East Deerfield. So well, it seems to me that we should, <coughs> should pursue <laughs> overriding stuff. <subject. laughs> Sounds like a good idea. I think we're pretty, we, I think we got a feel here that it's very, uh, we've got a lot of strong opinions. Liz is the last person. 
Um, a lot of strong opinions. Oh, AI. AI too. I just keep looking out. I wasn't sure if he was just going like this. I just have one quick statement, and that is, if if we are going to switch to be all everybody weekly, why then can't the male? And maybe it can't because of the size of the building. Why then can't all the mail just come directly to Whitley? They, that is one thing they did not want to happen. Why? Because the book is too small. Because it's too small. Have you ever small. been in that? No, I have. I to work in that building. And, it's not, and Chris is telling you, walking around like this, so right? Who would, around stuff. Who, would, who would then pay for the expansion of that building? We had asked, when we were doing the town hall project several years ago, we were going to do a, a bigger change, and we wanted to move the. We wanted to kind of make a connection with the with the post office, so the post office could have its own little area. We take down the or move maybe the existing post office because it would be the uh, the building is a his, uh, historic no yeah historical societies, and then we could <coughs> expand and have the post office, and they said. Well, no, because we don't know what the future of the Waverly Post Office is going to be. So, just in that statement, made me think that they're, they're, they really are planning on closing this post office at some time. So, I think the idea that they would expand or move or do something different in Waverly is. I would guess pretty much not going to happen. And AI. I've, I've lived on River Road. Close enough. I've lived on River Road since 1973. Uh, about 86, we started having problems. I think that might be when the zip code stuff came in play. Uh, I talked to Beverly, our postmaster, mistress. Uh, she says, the computer in Springfield, when it stores the mail, it knows that River Road is, in Waitley is delivered by South Deerfield, so it sends a mail to South Deerfield. Well, apparently when it gets to South Deerfield, the people that do the sorting there for the route drivers, they can't look at the envelope and say, it says Waitley, so they don't know to put it in his box here. Uh, a lot of the problems are postal service in South Deerfield. In the early mid-70s, my in-laws went to Australia for vacation. We got a postcard from them, addressed to Carolyn AI on River Road in Waitley. You got it. And that they delivered it. Recently, probably five years ago, our Comcast cable got shut off. What's going on here? Oh, you don't exist. Come to find out, somebody bought the house on Five River Road, Ralph Wyshewski's, yeah, not Ralph, but Elder Wyshewski's house, and they applied for Comcast service. And Comcast says, you can't get it, because you have it already. <laughs> they had to show up at Comcast's office in Amherst with a deed to show that they own that property, and that's when they shut my service off. <laughs> they end up, Comcast, to solve the problem, they ended up sending an engineer from Westfield, or yeah, Westfield, to Waitley to say, yes, there physically is a house there, and there are cable wires hooked to it since the cable system first came into Waitley. So then they finally in that, you know, reacted yeah. to that service. The, the problem is, I, I understand these other people's problems with West Waitley that they have. But the problem I have, have, River Road people have in South Deerfield, is the people delivering the mail. Yeah. They can't look at the le letters it just says Waitley on it? Well, and sometimes it doesn't say Waitley, but they should know the, the people after a while, you would think. So. The, uh, <laughs> my train, my train got derailed. Okay, I think we've heard, have we heard enough? Oh, Kathy wants one more. Oh, Kathy wants one more? <laughs> okay, Kathy, one more. This is it. This is it. Just one quick question. So if West Waverly's mail is going through Hartford, South Jersey is going through Shrewsbury, 
Can West Waitley stay the same? That's another good question. Because they are with good different answer. sorter and then deal with changing that may, everybody else? Because we can ask that question as well. Explore it maybe? That Please do, because yeah, that's, that's my point too. Yeah, we can ask that question. I'm really glad we had this session tonight. It really gave me some insight into what people are thinking about. Um, it's certainly giving Fred some Food something to contemplate over the next couple of weeks. Um, and I think if anyone has other questions, what is the select that, board meeting to discuss this? Yes. Um, not. I, it's not even on their agenda yet. It's not on the agenda yet. So 2023? Oh, yeah, sometime in 2023. Sometime in the next... Do you want it in like 2027 or somewhere? in 2053. I like the system as it is. Yeah, okay. So that was our original, was the July 15th, but we postponed that. So it's not going in. Yeah. We, we realized that there was enough controversy about it that um, that is not a date. Um, so if anyone has any further questions that they want us to ask the Postal Service, if you could email townclerk at waitley.org or you can give us a call extend, at extension three, you'll get Amy and you can leave, um, or you could leave messages uh, saying, you know, I had this thought when I got home and can you ask this question? Just and when we... <laughs> I didn't hear. Well, okay, Richard, what did you say? I didn't hear it. Come on. I just said don't send a letter. Oh. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if you think of anything else you want us to ask or are concerned about, please contact us. Um, no, there was something else I wanted to say, and I, I, I'm really thankful everybody has been so uh, polite and understanding and sensitive to one another. I know some f anger, certain things flared occasionally, but that's fine. We understand this is a really frustrating situation, and you know, changing address is like a daunting task. I can't. I'm going to have to do it in a few days, uh, a few months, because I'm moving. But. Um, two doors down, but <laughs> I still have to change all the addresses, so maybe we'll get this resolved before I have to change addresses, but no uh, I don't think so. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's been a really good evening. I think uh, a lot of stuff has been discussed. We, we can sympathize with one another, even if you have an opinion one way or the other, you still recognize that it's not working that way for everybody. Those that get their deliveries on time and get all their mail without any problem, I'm so happy for you. <laughs> Those that don't, um, and the other one thing that we did recognize is that we need to do a little bit more education on our, our address situation with people. Because having people, like Keith was saying, having people um, say that they live in South Deerfield, and I have had that before, you mean I don't live in South Deerfield? I thought I lived in South Deerfield. No, you live in Whiteley. Uh, birth certificates, people will put their South Deerfield address so it gets filed in South Deerfield and then they come to Whiteley looking for it and it's not there. Uh, but I appreciate everyone for coming and have a great night. Does anyone else have any parting words? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.